Hi, it's Dale again. Today I'm going to do a little bit of the rewiring or actually just repair of the wiring on uh, the Suzuki. A uh, couple things that I'm just going to mention. One of which is uh, the battery tray for these. Uh, the original battery is this. Uh, it's a 6N4B-2A. They, these, in my opinion, they don't last but about a year, these wet cell batteries. I feel that uh, I've had the best luck with the Motobat, but they don't make one the, uh, the right size. So what I had to do was uh, I went in here and expanded the size of this battery holder and it does fit in the frame. It's tight, but it's uh, all I did was cut it in the middle and expand it 11 30 seconds in order to get this battery in there. And it's tight. There's enough room on top. But these batteries, I've got some of these going on four or five years already, and they set outside in the in the winter time, and they're, I mean, out in the unheated building, and. Uh, they uh, they just last a lot better these gel batteries so that's something you might consider I mean it's not a not everybody's thing but uh, it will fit in this bike that way so I just like I said just a little over 11 30 seconds I added to the center of this the uh, this way it was you know from here to here was fine it was just the width and the height is fine under the seat like that and you can use the original strap also. And one other thing, when I was talking about the plating the other day, there's only one item on here that gets the uh, anodized finish, and that's the uh, resistor uh, box here. And that's, that's what it looks like after it's uh, been anodized. It fits under there. I've done some uh, repair here. Put new terminal ends on this, and uh, these are always cracked at this point in time. So I put new uh, shrink wrap around them and along here, and uh, that that gets that part of it back to where it should be. Another thing, and this is just uh, my personal thing, is I haven't changed anything as far as the 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 hookup of the wires here, but I'm able to use a mini fuse, uh, like, you know, it's new technology, it's got the, the little prongs. These are a lot better than the glass tubes. They're not original, but they're, uh, they're a lot better and they're out of the weather. And this little piece here is about, about $3.50. And this is how the glass fuse hooks in right here. So none of that has changed. So if you want to uh, go back to the original glass tube fuses, you can do that. But in my opinion, this is a little better for uh, uh, you know, fire protection, shorting, that sort of stuff. And yes, you can't go back. I guess you could go back to the original with the uh, on the battery box or just pick up another one. But this is a lot better deal with using the gel batteries. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you a couple of the repairs I'm going to do today. I've got to change this uh, connector right here. And this is one that they had cut off. I believe this is for the uh, uh, turn signals. So that's not a big deal. I'm just adding a, going to add a little piece of wire. and. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll go ahead and get this going. I'm just putting a splice in here. I'm sure everybody knows how to solder and all that stuff. I'm just going to do the one. I think I need just a little bit more on that one.
This does take a little bit of time to get these heated up. I'll show you uh, while we're waiting here. If you're ever interested in, re you know, a lot of these plastic connectors are, uh, they're broken by this stage in the game. And this is a kit that I get. I've got several different kits. It comes from uh, vintage, uh, vintage connections. This one here is the, uh, uh, the bullet connectors. And then this one here is uh, what most of the uh, non-latching terminal covers use. All right. This, uh, this is the bullet connector one. Everything for these old Jap bikes you can, you can pretty well get. <clears throat> Tell you, I went a little bit too long on that while I was talking. I like using these, um, the clear plastic heat shrink that goes around these connectors if I can. That way you can still see what color the wires are. This was a brown with a white tracer, and I just put a little paint on this brown wire. I didn't have any with that tracer on it. And then we Shrink it on there. And then on this end, I'm going to try to make it about the same length if I, if I can here. If you, uh, of course, you want to put your terminal cover over the wire before you term put the terminal on. And these work really slick if you've got the right tool. You can get this, the, the tool from those folks also. And if you just learn how to use these, this, the right equipment, you'll have really nice crimped connectors that look just like the factory. You just place it in there in the appropriate spot. I think I might have to move this back a little bit. There we go. And this way, you get the you get the wire crimped and the uh, insulation. And there you've got a, just like a factory job, and then pull your cover up there. So there we go. That's a repair in that area. And uh, then you, you can make a, a terminal tool out of a piece of uh, an old screwdriver or something if you want to. But you just, you go down inside and you, you push down on the uh, connector and pull out on the wire. 
And that one came right out. And I, what I try to do is uh, do these one at a time so I can keep up with the, with the right orientation. And now the, the uh, terminal is, is fine on this, so I'm not going to replace it. But all that stuff is in this kit, so you can replace that if you, if you need to. So I'm just going to go. I've got the uh, uh, cutout here at the top of this one. I've got the cutout there. And I'm just going to put that one right back in the, and just snaps in. And then I go in here and I, can, I get my, my next one. Terminal's in good shape. Again, we've got this up, just like here. That's our center one. Again, snaps right in and locks. And the last one. Again, terminal looks fine. There we go. So that's that's all changed. And everything's just like just like the original, except it's not yellow and uh, it's not broken. But I replaced this one here and this one. I think that's the only one I didn't. So I, I've got all my repair done here. I've just got to take off the wrapping. I'll rewrap this. Uh, they had cut a lot of this up here, these, these triple connectors and the double connectors. I don't think there's a double one on this one, but the triple, like this one, where you, it's crimped on right here, and then you can stick one wire in here, and one here and one here. That was uh, all cut and spliced together on this one, so I replaced the triple connector. And again, those all come in the kit. So if you buy the, the kit from them people, um, and I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I just, I've been using them for quite a while, and they really work great. So uh, that's a source for that if you, if you folks need it. They're, uh, <clears throat> just look them up in each connections on, uh, online, and you can get whatever you need from them. That's uh, about all I'm going to show, I think, on the wiring. And we're getting ready to do uh, get back to dis or uh, assembly. Um, so I'm going to start some assembly here. I'll get some of the frame components back together, and uh, at some point in time, we're going to start on wheels and engine stuff. So st stay with me. Uh, thanks for going along on the ride with me. Okay, here just to show you the, the finished product before it goes back in the bike. Everything's wrapped back up. Everything's repaired. They even have the original part number tag put back into the loom. So there you go. A completed harness.